Federal Magistrate Judge Bruce Reinhardt is holding a hearing at 1 p.m. today to decide whether or not to unseal the affidavit that was used to justify the raid on former President Trump's home. The Justice Department opposes the release while President Trump is pushing for the affidavit to be unsealed. Joining me now, the Coalition to Protect American Workers Executive Director, former Chief of Staff to Vice President Mike Pence, Mark Short. Mark, great to see you this morning. Is there any? It Morning. should be on the, the. This is my opinion. After it should be unsealed because the American people right now deserve to know what justified and necessitated raiding the home of a former president, which upended more than two centuries of norms in this country. Dag and I wholeheartedly agree with you. I think that it is an incredibly unprecedented move to raid a former president's home, and I think that the American people are owed a better explanation and more transparency from the Department of Justice. Mayor Garland owes it to the American people, and, and we may get that answer today if the judge decides to unseal the affidavit. But what is and what's afoot here is Merrick Garland standing up last week, didn't take any questions, but talking about uh, the practice of a na the narrow scope of a search. And as Dan Henninger in the Wall Street Journal points out today, the scope wasn't narrow. It, as look at the evidence that the FBI picked up three of President Trump's passports to expired one current, that it was kind of a haphazard search not a careful one. Yeah, Dag, and I don't know much about how the search was conducted. I do mm -hmm. think there's a reality that Department of Justice could have, and I think should have de-escalated this. I think it's obviously been reported that uh, that there were 15 boxes removed months ago. That subsequently information came forward that said there's additional material there, and that uh, uh, a whistleblower confirmed that there was additional material. It would seem there were intermediate steps the Department mm -hmm. of Justice could have taken if some of those materials contained uh, secure information to. To, to reclaim that without uh, going to the stop of, uh, of having agents come and conduct a raid at the former president's home. And again, I think it's such an unprecedented move that the American people owe more are owed more of an explanation to date as to what transpired and why uh, the information triggered that sort of a step. What and also breeds the the leaking to the preferred media, the liberal media. It breeds wild speculation. Um, spinning scenarios about you know, espionage and you know, we, how many years did we deal with President Trump as Putin's puppet, that he's a KGB agent and all of that utter garbage. But again, at a time when the American people are so divided and when the people are struggling, yeah. uh, the, the darkness that uh, shrouds what justice and the FBI are up to, it makes the country that much more divided. I agree with you again, Dagan, 100 percent. I think the reality is that what we need is more transparency, and I think we are incredibly divided right now. The last thing you need is the Justice Department that's politicized, and I think the only thing that can heal that is more transparency, and I think that benefits mm -hmm. all sides in this case, and I think that, that we're owed that, and whether or not that's something that we get today or it's something that uh, Attorney General Garland will provide in the coming days, it's something that needs to happen and needs to happen soon. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre tweeting last night that President Biden, quote, rejects calls to defund the FBI, just like he rejects calls to defund the police. Mark, former Vice President Mike Pence made similar comments yesterday, calling the attacks on the FBI wrong, saying that they need to end. Your thoughts on this, but now it is um, amusing to me that people on the left are talking about how dare you say defund the FBI when they were for the reverse not that long ago and or they're funding uh, with, I would call them financial law enforcement uh, funding the IRS to the tune of 80 billion additional dollars. You're right, Dagan, with, with roughly $80 billion in this new bill, it's amazing that it's one of the few things that survived from something that started at $6 trillion, went down to $4 trillion, under $2 trillion, then under $1 trillion. But the one thing that stayed was the desire to increase the IRS by roughly 87,000 agents. Mm -hmm. But to your earlier question about uh, where the Biden administration has been, clearly they were supportive of defund police efforts. And I think one of your earlier segments even talked about 
One of the reasons we have rising crime in our country is because of that defund police effort and the fact that you cannot keep as many of our policemen. It's harder to recruit and it's, it's creating a higher sense of, of violence and crime in our inner cities. It's for the very same reason that we should not be embracing a defund the FBI effort. Certainly, uh, Merrick Garland, certainly Trump appointee Ray are owed uh, explanations to the American people. But at the same time, nobody would want us to defund the FBI more than the communist Chinese or the cartels in Mexico or the human trafficking cartels mm -hmm. south of the border. That's who wants us to defund the FBI. Mm -hmm. The right should not be embracing the same rhetoric of the left and arguing to defund law enforcement. Before we go, speaking of people on the left, uh, that part of the media finally admitting something that we knew all along, that the so-called Inflation Reduction Act was a marketing ploy. Listen to this, Mark. Yeah. No, it doesn't live up to its name. Let's be real. The, they called it the Inflation Reduction Act as a marketing device, uh, in part to uh, lock down the vote of Joe Manchin or to, to uh, reassure Joe Manchin that they were focused on his issue. Let's start with the name of it. The Inflation Reduction Act basically speaks to what everybody's concerned with right now, kitchen table, checkbook items. And so he addresses his head on. You know, John, you and I often talk about how the Democrats aren't the best marketers. This is marketing branding genius. Completely marketing tool. <laughs> this is, uh, th that was a, a title that seemed to work better than build back better. <laughs> and so they, they went with that. But the inflation we're experiencing now is not addressed at all in this legislation. Well, now they say that, Mark. Well, it's incredibly Orwellian terminology. We know it's not going to reduce inflation. What will will be in continued tightening by the Fed. And I think we see now two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. We're in a recession and we're probably headed for worse economic conditions as they continue to tighten to control the inflation. But there's nothing in this bill that's going to actually stop inflation. What's going to stop it is going to be a tightening monetary policy, which I'm afraid is going to drive us further into a deeper recession. Day. But they don't have any choice, do they, Mark, given how, it, again, that's, it, it's so burdensome on the American people. And if you don't kill it now, that burden continues for years to come. I, I agree. I think that uh, inflation it, it hurts those who are at lower incomes and fixed incomes the most. And I think the reality is that it's what the Fed needs to do. But I think that this was created by Democrats by their incredible spending habits of the first two years the Biden administration generated this sort of inflation. And now the only way to kill it is going to be tightening monetary policy. Mark, great to see you. Thank you so much for being here this morning always. Good. Thanks for having me. Mark Short.